In this episode, with spring in full swing in Scotland, I thought I'd again work on my trad climbing skills. Previously I'd led a pitch that was graded V diff or very difficult, but I'd like to push that grade a little more. To help me do that, I've asked quite possibly one of the greatest trad climbers ever to give me a hand, Dave McLeod. The plan was to find a climb one grade above what I've done before, that would be graded severe, and lead that. Here's how the day went. Inevitably, the conversation of which route and whether or not I should on-site it popped up. Part of this decision-making process involved Dave watching me climb a little bit, so we had a mini bouldering session as a warm-up. Dave made a video on his YouTube channel all about deciding whether or not to lead a climb and he highlights a number of points, both good and bad, he observed about my technique. You can check out the video on his channel. There'll be a link at the end of this video or down below. Can you see like when you look at that, there's not really a hardly tracks. any protection. Well, there might be protection. It might just not be obvious, but with that one, it's just more obvious. Yeah. You can't see, right, there's definitely a crack to aim for. Doesn't necessarily mean it'll be badly protected, but it might do. Yeah. <laughs> so with that deep crack, you can see that there's definitely protection, yeah. but there's like a 20, 25 foot section where it's all wide crack. So we've got two blue cams with us. So you're going to have to use them sparingly. Yeah. So just because there's a big wide crack doesn't necessarily count as an advantage because you might actually run out of the right size. Yeah. So it swings around, but it's, well, would you like to just lead that on site or? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that'd be your call whether you want to lead. Um, I'll quite happily lead if, or, or you can. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to have a, I'm going to have a wee skeck. Yeah. And have a think. Yeah, let's, let's walk up to the start and have a look. The route in question was a gorgeous 30 metre pitch following a large crack before breaking into slabs near the top. It looked well within my capability and I'd have no hesitation leading this. If it had bolts in. Which it doesn't. My inexperience with trad climbing was plain to see. I don't really know what I'm doing at the top. I'm walking off, I'm setting an anchor, I'm beeline oh, you up. you to set off an anchor, yeah. And then belay you up. Yeah. I'd yeah. probably be more anxious doing that than anything else. Right, yeah, yeah. I think we should play it safe. That sounds and like just, a great plan. I'll just belay you up. I mean, let's do that. Yeah. I'll lead. I think this would still be the hardest grade I've done. Mm -hmm. So if we did lead it today, that would still be an achievement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if it's not an achievement, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the main achievement is to come back from the, the day out climbing in one piece. Yeah, yeah. That's the number one achievement. Yeah. Okay, oh, well, that's a secondary. If we're going, if we're going with that, then let's let's get you, let's get <laughs> okay. you on the sharp end. Okay, good stuff. Right, I'll take some gear on my harness. Rather than have a specific tutorial or lesson with Dave, the plan was to simply climb together and absorb as much as I could from him. Even belaying him was illuminating. Bearing in mind, Dave has free soloed 8B plus and climbed many routes where falling simply wasn't an option. He still climbed this route, which likely has a French grade of around 4A with the same precise, careful style he always employs. I'm predominantly a sport climber and it was interesting to see how mindful Dave was with checking the condition of the wall for loose or friable rock. I'm just being super careful here because um, this protruding block is quite small and quite narrow and I might stand in right below me. So I could use that as a foothold. I'm not going to, just in case. I wonder if uh, Mike will lead this climb today. I, I'm quite certain he get up here, he'll say, yes, I could lead that climb. Whether it's a good idea to is another thing. The start is quite steep and the gear is not straightforward to organize. Um, the upper half of the pitch was much easier and more straightforward. So I think he could probably handle that fine, although it is more run out. Um, so I'll be really interested to see. I can't actually predict uh, whether he'll be keen to do it or not, or actually whether he should. Next, I second Dave up on a top rope to check it out. The route was lovely, as expected. The most difficult part was this awkward bulge right at the very start. I know what you, what you were saying about this being awkward, the start. Since you can't place gear that far above you, a mistake here would result in an almost unavoidable collision with the ledge below. This wouldn't kill you, 
but could certainly spoil your day. Where should I climb? Should I climb there or there? I don't even know where the route is. The holds here are bomber, but I couldn't find a way to make this move less awkward. I've not climbed anything like this ever, but at the same time it's it's quite easy climbing. It's way more difficult than anything I've led on trad, but I feel like it's quite straightforward. It's just like a perfect foothold whenever you need it. Oh, it's lovely climbing, no? I have not taken note of any of these gear placements. After that, the route eases up, but nearer the top, there is limited placement for cams. Instead, you must use nuts for protection, which I haven't used. When I was doing my first trad lead with Pete Whitaker, we picked a route that could be protected exclusively with cams. These were the easiest to learn to place. So I've never actually had to place nuts or hexes. Nice one. Yeah. Piece of cake. Very good. On top rope. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was trying to climb it with the thought of... Alright, you're going to have to lead this in a minute. Um, but like I didn't feel in any bother uh, on top rope. And I was trying to remember the, the gear placements, but it's very easy to just pull them out and climb past them and not hmm. not think about it. Uh, I mean, you could put gear in completely different places to yeah. what I did. Yeah. And I just put in, I only put in the kind of bare minimum that yeah. I felt I needed. Yeah, feel good. Excellent. <laughs> that's what you want? That's what I want, yeah. And, it was, um, and if that's all we do today, I've had a fantastic day. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's, all, that's the interesting thing is like... Uh, it's the what now question. Will we have off and have a have a yes. cup of tea? That is a, a, that's always a great start to any good tri climbing decision. Have off and have a cup of tea. You tell you Scottish, eh? <laughs> we'll have a cup of tea and we'll discuss. Now it was time to decide whether or not I should lead this climb. But before that, a word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Rockfax, who you might be familiar with as they publish many climbing guidebooks. However, lately, I've been using the Rockfax digital app. It's a digital guidebook on your phone with over 76,000 routes. So if you're projecting something, this app probably has it. Having the topograph right there on your phone makes it considerably easier to find the route you're looking for. You can zoom in and out and move left and right on a high res image with the route in question highlighted. Additionally, comments left by other climbers are there on the route. So if some rock has come loose or there's a dodgy bolt, you get updated information. One of the most useful things to me is the approach notes and parking information. The last thing I want is to irritate landowners by parking somewhere I shouldn't, so this tells me exactly how to get to the crag without upsetting anyone. Having three or four guidebooks worth of information on your phone drastically lightens the load too, which is a bonus especially when you're trad climbing. So if you've never tried a digital guidebook, I would highly recommend checking out Rockfax Digital. The app is available on iOS and Android, and Mike Boyd viewers get 20% off an annual subscription with the code in the description. So go check out Rockfax Digital. Thank you very much to Rockfax for sponsoring this content. Right, back to the climbing. By the way, if you're wondering what that popping sound is, it's uh, people murdering pheasants over there. Anyway, um, so with... I finished second in the route, it went fine, uh, no no slips or falls, um, abseil down, no problem. So now we've got to make the decision whether we'll go for this lead or not. Um, I think it's within my within my limits physically. Um, the only question I have is, is, is it within my limits mentally? Like, can I keep composed enough to actually um, climb well? So if it was a sport climb, no problem, I think. I think I'd sail up it, but it's not a sport climb. Um, so I think I'm going to go for it though, or at least I'm going to do a move, do a move or two, and put some gear in and see see how I'm feeling and 
then decide to push on. But even if you got totally stuck, you could stay where you are and then um, we could get you from the top. Yeah, yeah. That's not, that's like a last resort, but it, you have that in your mind that um, the, only, the only thing that we're really trying to avoid here is taking a fall. <laughs> yeah. But take it step by step. You could, you could actually go up the first, cr like to that, the, the bulge basically. Yeah. Arrange your gear uh, and then step back down and just see how you feel. Yeah. You yeah. can even give that gear a bit of a tug, see how that feels. Uh, just, just resist the temptation to kind of sprint for the, yeah. the finish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like take it chilled. Place gear or, if there is gear. Yeah. yeah. Place gear if there is gear, absolutely, yeah. Get to a point where you're like, I think I'm going to sit on a piece of gear and lower off. Just uh, put in a backup piece as well. Okay. Put yeah. in two. Put in two, yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. Cool. All right. Cool. Right, you're on Bealey. Okay. And uh, yeah, play when you're ready. Okay, I'm good to go. A calm in there, Dave, or not? Yeah, on the left, I had a purple in there, I think. In here? Yeah, maybe a pur purple in the, or, and, and or the grey as well. In here? Yeah. Quite a snug fit in a wee slot in there. Okay. Good man. Here I found it incredibly difficult to place gear into this really deep crack. I was getting confused with what hand to use and the placement was so far away from where I would normally climb this that it made the whole ordeal very awkward. I ended up placing the big cam poorly, got spooked, and decided to down climb back to the ledge. I think this was an important trad lesson for me, to not let ego or pride prevent me from bailing or down climbing if I got spooked. It almost felt embarrassing down climbing something so easy, but the awkward gear, coupled with literal gunshots in the background, was starting to get to me. I made my way back to the ledge, had a chat with Dave, regained composure and headed up with a clearer head. Anything good up there? Nice one. Okay, so you're gonna arrange another piece now. Nicely done. Here I made a little mistake. I place a really good nut here, but I don't extend the runner enough, meaning that as I move out from the ledge, the rope wraps around the edge causing rope drag. It's not enough to bother me here, but becomes a pain later. Another example of something I just don't think about when I'm sport climbing. Now the climbing gets very easy. 
but there is a little bit of run out. A fall here, although unlikely, would best be avoided. That's good. This is the most bomber nut ever. Like, that's never going to come out. I feel so much calmer now, like just having done some climbing. But the rope drag is really starting to bother me. Like, this is so bad. Oh, that nut just popped out. This is the most bomber nut ever. Like, that's never going to come out. <laughs> I'm not going back down. <laughs> I do not condone that, that behaviour. It was very tempting, with the terrain now becoming very easy, to just head straight for the top without placing any more gear. But Dave explicitly told me not to do that at the bottom. So I stuck in one more cam and headed for the top. All right, Dave, let's be safe. Well, that was a bit of an ordeal. Got there in the end. Some gear fell out. Uh, there was some not very good gear. There was some bomber gear. There was like explosions in the background. This will teach you about bad rope management. <laughs> oh. And these are 70 meter ropes. That feels like about 10 meters. Now for some post-lead analysis from Dave. Let's see how I did. When Mike was leading, um, almost all of that whole lead I was really happy with. There was actually only two things. One, a piece of gear a bit higher up, but one just here when he was arranging his first runner. I think he had his right foot where mine is now, but kind of turned around a bit. But he put his left foot there. And I'm just not like mega happy with that smear. It's like, if you're like lean, leaning right into it, then fine, but it's quite polished rock um, and there's also, well there's a better foothold higher up and there's also a better foothold just about a couple of inches further across, there's one there and there's one there so that one just made me think, oh maybe his foot could slip because I think he's, he had his hands like up here and that made me think if his foot slips then he could slip so I would have preferred if he'd bridged out a bit wider to something like that or, or that. But that's just a, a, a minor thing. Okay, I shall continue. That, that placement's bomber. That's not going anywhere. Trying to remember how to hand jam after a winter of bouldering. <laughs> it's actually been like a couple of months since I've actually just tied into a rope. So there's just a bit, there's a bit of novelty for me today. Oh no. That cam placement, it's, it's okay, but it's not amazing. I, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's all right, but it's, it's just that there's better ones on either side. So there's a good parallel crack a bit deeper into the crack there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but just the, one of the lobes of that cam is just kind of in a groove of quite crossly rock that looks like it might just kind of break open if it, if it held a fall. So that's like a, a 7 out of 10. The placement's not such a problem, it's just that there's 10 out of 10 placements right beside it. That one's bomber. You can probably see this, this was this, the second thing that it was, the only other thing that Mike could have done. Whoops, what that was. <laughs> um, this was the only other thing in the pitch that Mike could have done differently, was just extend this runner. You can see the problem, that that carabine is only going out to there, so it needs to extend out to there in order for the rope to run freely. So that gave him a little bit of rope drag further on, up on the pitch. It doesn't take much, so it's, it's always with rope drag, you know, it's, it seems innocuous when you're actually at it, like, okay, that's not a big deal. But just a small amount of drag when you're 20 metres higher adds up to quite a lot. Just so nice climbing up all these flakes. See the, the cam that you had in, in there? 
that block's just slightly hollow and there's the same size cam in a bigger block just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes, minor. Very good. Nice one. <laughs> Not bad. That was brilliant. Yeah. Rope, bit of rope drag, bit of bad rope management. Um, just that one runner on the orange. Was it, was it just one that was, was causing all that? Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah, yeah. the one, but the nut behind the boulder. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well I'm done. psyched though. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's a bit too early to say. It's one of these things that you probably have to, you know, as you're driving home tonight, you'll be sort of digesting that, going like, "Oh, what does that mean for what you would do next?" The same grade again. Yeah. <laughs> like for many another, times. Yeah. For another hundred routes. That's that's the way forward. Yeah. yeah. There's some wise words from the master to finish. To get better at this sort of thing, you've got to do it a lot. And I've got much to learn, but trad climbing especially here in Scotland, really is something else. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.